Hemolytic disease of the newborn is a common cause of unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia in the first few days of life. It occurs when there is an incompatibility between maternal and fetal blood types. The most common causes of immune-mediated maternal-fetal blood type incompatibility leading to hemolytic disease in the newborn are abion compatibility and rhesus isomunization. ABO incompatibility can occur following any pregnancy in a type O mother, including the first pregnancy. However, it only actually happens in a minority of cases. The prophylactic use of RH immunoglobulin has decreased the incidence of hemolysis due to RH incompatibility. Minor blood group incompatibilities, such as the Duffy antigen group, are less common but can also result in disease. These newborns are not typically jaundiced immediately upon delivery, but usually become so during the first 24 to 36 hours of life. An evaluation for hemolytic disease must be pursued whenever jaundice occurs during this time. Severity ranges from mild hyperbilirubinemia and anemia to hydropsoptalis. Affected newborns may be pale or yellowish due to anemia and hyperbilirubinemia respectively. Hemolysis can also result in hepatosplenomegaly. Hydropsophtalis is the most severe form of hemolytic disease of the newborn. These newborns can present with generalized edema and a myriad of life-threatening conditions, such as circulatory shock, pleural effusions, and coagulopathies. This condition is usually detected prenatally. The severity of hemolysis is generally more mild with ABO incompatibility, but is unpredictable because of the amount of circulating maternal antibodies. These antibodies may persist for several months and cause recurring or persistent anemia. RH incompatibility is usually more severe than ABO incompatibility. As well, severity can increase with each immunized pregnancy. Affected newborns are often anemic and have higher levels of bilirubin. Initial evaluation in a stable newborn typically includes a combination of blood type and RH status, complete blood count, reticulocyte count, direct or indirect antiglobulin test, that is Coombs test, a peripheral blood smear, and or a G6PD assay. Incompatible blood types and evidence of hemolysis should elicit suspicion. The diagnosis is established via a positive antiglobulin test, direct or indirect, either test will do. However, keep in mind that other causes of hyperbilirubinemia may coexist, particularly if hyperbilirubinemia is severe. Hemolytic disease of the newborn is not ruled out by a negative direct antiglobulin test. If the direct antiglobulin test is negative, then an indirect antiglobulin test should be performed. It is also important to be aware that the direct antiglobulin test is typically more strongly positive in cases of rhesus isomerization than in cases with ABO incompatibility. Management generally focuses on alleviating the two main sequelae of hemolysis, anemia and hyperbilirubinemia. Several different interventions may be required to accomplish that, which are necessary depends on the time of onset and the severity of illness. Asymptomatic infants with mild sequelae may not require any intervention, whereas newborns with severe illness may require intensive care with very close monitoring. The degree of anemia is highly variable, and somewhat counterintuitively, it does not correlate well with the total level of circulating maternal antibodies. Treatment is individualized based on the needs of the newborn. Asymptomatic infants without high bilirubin levels or risk factors for severe disease may be followed without immediate intervention. However, those with mild symptomatic anemia may require an exchange or simple transfusion, amongst other treatment options. Severe anemia is much more complicated and can require intensive care with cardiovascular stabilization and an exchange transfusion. It is important to note that circulation of maternal antibodies and resultant hemolysis can continue for a few months. Upon stabilization, infants must be monitored for the possible recurrence of anemia. Oral hydration and phototherapy, if needed, are usually sufficient for the treatment of hyperbilirubinemia. Less commonly required options that may be necessary if phototherapy alone fails include intravenous fluid supplementation, intravenous immune globulin, and exchange transfusion. Monitoring of bilirubin levels without ongoing treatment is usually continued until there is a downward trend in the safe zone. 
Breastfeeding should be encouraged, and worried mothers should be reassured that breastfeeding will not harm their baby. Although antibodies are present in breast milk, they are not absorbed in sufficient quantities to exacerbate hemolysis.